Hi everybody, welcome back to the Vinyl Junkie Record Shop. My name is Mike and today uh, we're going to do a uh, Halloween edition of uh, A Day at the Shop. Uh, Halloween's right around the corner, in fact it is tomorrow. Um, and uh, I wanted to do, uh, I'm going to try to keep this one kind of short. My last one was a little bit longer than I wanted because I tend to talk a lot. Oh, and by the way, I hope you like my costume. I am dressed as a professional fat guy, and I think I wear it really well. Um, so Halloween, uh, I want to talk about just a few, in fact, three of uh, my favorite Halloween-themed or kind of Halloween-ish um, albums. Um, two of them I'm going to show on vinyl, and I got one CD. Uh, but, uh, you know, every year Halloween comes around, and, and uh, you know... Um, Certain music kind of um, tends to lend itself to to that particular uh, holiday and season, just because of the nature of hard rock metal and creepy stuff and things like that. But uh, um, I, there's there's all there's at least uh, these these three records are ones that I always like to listen to uh, in the month of October and around Halloween, uh, just because I think they really kind of ca capture that the spirit of of what Halloween is. So let's start with. Um, uh, I'll, we'll start with this CD I've got. Um, you know, again, we're 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 a music channel. We're not a political channel, so uh, some people might not appreciate that I'm showing this. I don't care. Um, you know, everybody knows the story, so we're not going to get into it. But this has always been one of my favorite bands, and this is one of my favorite albums from the band. Uh, and and it's very um, appropriate for uh, the, the season and Halloween. And it's Iced Earth with Horse Show. Um, wish I had it on vinyl. I uh, don't know that I've ne ever seen it on vinyl. In fact, I don't even know if it's been ever released on. There's probably a, a, a reissue on vinyl. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I've got the CD. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with uh, uh, with the uh, album or show by Iced Earth, essentially when uh, um, we'll just say the guy, because some people don't even like to hear his name. The guy in the band, uh, the creative force in the band was wanting to write a, a, a a concept piece, uh, a really lengthy and complicated concept work uh, about a, uh, a trio of songs in a popular album that he had that, that had come out before, and uh, he in, instead he kind of got sidetracked and and um, wrote wrote some songs about his favorite uh, uh, monsters, I guess you know. If you had Halloween on his mind, but uh, anyway, he wrote some songs about some classic monster films because he, he was a bit big into those. And uh, after he'd written a couple of them, decided uh, you know, thought about maybe doing an EP in between that, and then thought, ah, let's just let's take some time before we do that big concept album, and we'll do this concept album, which is a collection of songs about uh, the, the classic monsters. So what you have is you've got, um, you know. Um, Wolf, about the Wolf Man, Damien, which is the uh, the Antichrist, Jack, Jack the Ripper, um, uh, a, a Ghost of Freedom, which is a song that's not really based on any kind of monster, but it yeah, has a ghost in it. Um, Imhotep, uh, The Mummy, you have one about Jekyll and Hyde, you have uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein, um, a Dracula, and Phantom of the Opera. And... Uh, you know, if you're if you're a fan of the band Ice Earth, you're probably familiar with the album and, and these songs. There's some really great songs on this album. Dracula is a great song that's been in the band's live set um, over the years. Um, uh, uh, Damien is one of my favorite Ice Earth songs. It's just got such a heavy and plotting uh, riff. Uh, Wolf kicks the album off with uh, you know that uh, the double bass, um, uh, Richard Christie's double bass. Uh, just, you know, it, it really, I, I think it's a great album. It was um, not the last, but um, the the last album before an extended absence to feature Matt Barlow on vocals, who is a fan favorite. Uh, but this is just, a, this is a really good album, and it's all tied together based on the classic monster films and, and Halloween kind of themes. So, at, uh, we'll put number three, we'll put in the Ice Earth with Horse Show. Um, and then... I think this album is one that this, I mean, this, without this album, you really couldn't have a lot of Halloween themed albums. And this has just always been one of my favorites. Uh, recently, uh, maybe last year, I think I finally picked this up on, on vinyl. But um, it's Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. Uh, it came out in 1975. Um, 
this was Alice's first solo album. Uh, so it featured uh, some different musicians that had previously appeared in, uh, in, in the Alice Cooper band. Um, but uh, uh, this is a, it's a concept album based uh, kind of uh, about uh, a, a nightmare um, or uh, these uh, visions, scary, scary experiences that this character Steven has. Um, and uh, just um, it, this the album's not about Halloween, uh, but uh, just, you know, the themes and uh, stories and uh, uh, lyrical content, just everything's kind of Halloween-ish. It's, uh, it's kind of dark, kind of scary, kind of demented. Uh, but this is just a really fantastic album. It's one of my favorite Alice Cooper albums. I love Welcome to My Nightmare. I remember um, hearing the the concert metal version of that in the in like in the 80s when MTV aired a concert on Halloween night I think it was from Detroit and uh Alice Cooper had kind of um made a comeback in the 80s with uh, uh the album Constrictor and then followed up with uh by uh, what well, we kind of have in the background here if you see it and hear it <coughs> excuse me raise your fist and yell and uh uh they were really great 80s hard rock albums in my opinion um, but they opened that show with a, a metalized version of Welcome to My Nightmare. Now, I will admit that back in that day, I wasn't real familiar with a lot of the 70s Alice Cooper stuff. So uh, the very first time I heard this, the original studio version of Welcome to My Nightmare, you can imagine that um, I was a little surprised because it's a lot different than that live, more metalized version. In fact, Welcome to My Nightmare is kind of, maybe you could say disco-ish, uh, jazzy. It features a lot of brass instruments, and it's got kind of a swingy feel, but I've always really loved that song and just thought it was one of the great, I think it's one of Alice's best songs, one of the classic rock songs anyway. And um, then, yeah, it follows up with Devil's Food, which is, uh, um, you know, Devil's Food and the Black Widow. I mean, that's that's straight uh, proto-metal. I mean, you've got that, that kind of plotting, Du, 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 riff that uh, that would make its way into to Iron Maiden lore, and uh, you you just hear that it, it it's just a dark and eerie kind of sounding song of the two songs together. Um, that this, this the song itself the verse is not really super metallic and heavy on the album, but it's just dark and brooding in it, and it really lays the blueprint out for heavy metal that would come. And you got to think, you know, for 1975, you know, that's the kind of stuff that bands like Judas Priest and, and uh, um, you know, even um, you know, Deep Purple was kind of doing that kind of thing. You, 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 hear, you hear a lot of what all, all that is metal now in the, the combination of Devil's Food and Black Widow. Plus, you throw in uh, Vincent Price's narration on it, and yeah, it's super Halloween-y. Um, some folks, I always like that song too. I, it's kind of Broadway-ish maybe, kind of, uh, um, uh, I, I, I don't know I, what other words you could use for it, but, uh, um, you know, it, uh, it's got great arrangements and, and, uh, vocals. Uh, I, I think it's great. The, the ballad Only Women Bleed, I mean, that's a classic, uh, Department of Youth is, uh, a good hard rock song. And then my, my, Favorite song in the album, and another one of my favorite Alice Cooper songs, uh, Cold Ethel, with its just energized and um, propul propulsive uh, hard rock riff, and then the, the lyrics, I mean, just, you know, listen to the song, you know, it's that's that's Halloween material. Um, and then, uh, you know, it closes out with Stephen, uh, The Awakening, and then the song Escape. Um but yeah, it's just, uh, it's very fitting. It just feels like when you put this on in the month of October, it feels like Halloween. It feels like Halloween is coming. And the, the concept album, the, the production, the uh, the arrangements, the depth of all the instruments and everything uh, probably can be attributed to, to the Bob Ezrin production. Um, you hear a lot of similarities, like if you listen to Welcome to My Nightmare and then listen to Kiss Destroyer, you can tell that uh, you, you can hear the, the Bob Ezrin uh, production and how those albums, the, at least the production of those albums are similar. And you can even hear how some of the, some of the songwriting is, is, is a, a little similar. Um, you know, the songs on Destroyer and how they compare to some of the songs on Alice Cooper. Um, 
But uh, yeah, welcome to my nightmare. Love this album. Always love to listen to this on and around Halloween. And definitely, without Alice and this album, you you wouldn't have my all time favorite Halloween themed album. Um, not only is it one of my all time favorite, uh, is my favorite Halloween album. It's uh, it's one of my favorite records ever of all time. And you, you could argue, in fact, I listened to this just the other day on the way home from work. And uh, every time I listen to it, I, I just feel like I'm hearing something new. It just feels fresh. It doesn't feel dated. It came out in the, in the mid-80s, and, and it's still uh, vital uh, today. Um, and you could easily argue that it, it could be the greatest heavy metal album ever made. Um, for me, that's still going to be Iron Maiden's Power Slave. But this could easily be number two. Uh, it, it's easily going to be in the top ten discussion of all-time classic metal albums. And it is, without doubt, I, I say, the, the greatest heavy metal concept album, if not the, the greatest concept album ever. And most of you maybe have guessed already uh, that it is Abigail by King Diamond. Uh, this was King's first uh, solo uh, album after um, Merciful Fate. Uh, kind of neat about this, uh, I, I got this at a Karma Records uh, Back in, when did this album come out? In 1980, up to the 87. Um, and uh, either they ordered this for me or the guy, the shop knew I would want it to put, put my name on it right there. Uh, back when you could get a, a vinyl, a new vinyl album for $5.98. <laughs> that shows you how old I am. But see, there's this, my name and everything. I, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but uh, this album is just fantastic at, in, at so different levels. First of all, let's just talk about the lineup. You have King Diamond on vocals, and I think that this might be one of the single most incredible vocal performances of, of any album ever recorded. Uh, King's voice is definitely an instrument on this album, and he does so many different things and can set so many different tones with so many different vocal um ranges and and intonations and tones um his voice was a true instrument in the mix of this of this record and is he is absolutely the star um but uh he had brought along michael dinner from merciful fate and this was the uh, first time i had been introduced to andy laroque on lead guitar one of my favorite guitar players this is a great uh, duo on this album um, and then a fantastic rhythm section of Mickey D, the first time I'd ever heard of, of Mickey D. Mickey D still played today. Made, you know, kind of got his most, his steadiest gig when he got behind the kit for Motorhead. And then Timmy Hansen, who sadly is no longer with us. Um, but uh, what an incredible rhythm section. And this album is just, this is a perfect album. This is sheer perfection. There is not one flaw on this album. It, it from start to finish, it, it's engaging, it pulls you in, it kicks your ass, and uh, it's a compelling listen. It's, you know, you can put it on and listen to, pick any particular song and listen to it, but it's definitely one of those albums that is best taken in uh, as a whole. And uh, it, you know, it essentially it tells a story of, I don't really get, get into too much into the story, um, but uh, a, young, a young couple um, inherits a mansion and they go to, to take possession of this mansion and come to find out that, uh, the, uh, the young fella, uh, in, in the story, um, has, uh, a family history that involves, um, infidelity and uh, a child born out of wedlock and the, the, the demon, the demon baby that was still born, uh, the spirit of that child then, uh, is within this mansion and, and possesses his new bride and yada 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 anyway it's a fantastic story it's very well thought out very well written and the music is just sheer perfection on this thing the music complements the story more so than in than any other concept album i think i've ever ever heard um the the musicianship is absolutely top-notch um the songs are memorable. This is this is just it's a perfect album, and uh, it gives you chills. Uh, it uh, it 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 gives you that vibe, and it's most definitely I think uh, most enjoyable on a cold, rainy Halloween night. Uh, you sit down, put this on, and listen to Abigail, and it's 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 truly an experience, just like watching you know watching a movie. 
Um, but I can't say enough good things about the album. It's always been one of my favorites, uh, and it's very tough to beat. And you could easily make an argument that Abigail is not only the greatest Halloween album, Halloween-themed album um, of all time. It could be one of the greatest metal albums of all time. Now, oddly enough, you probably say, hey, you, well, you, know, you didn't have any Halloween albums in there, Hallow's Eve. There's a lot I could have picked, but, uh, you know, these are three that I always kind of go to this time of the year, and uh, they're three fantastic albums, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing those. And if you've not heard, I mean, if you've never heard Abigail, um, do, do yourself, you, you've, got to, you've got to listen to King Diamond Abigail. Um, and if you've not heard, if you, you know, if you've never heard Welcome to My Nightmare, you got to check that out too. Um, you know, true metal heads might not be able to enjoy the, the diversity uh, and depth in, in that Alice Cooper album. Uh, but there's enough hard rock to go around to satisfy, uh, satisfy the, you know, the, the, the elitist metal heads, I guess. And again, the iced earth, I don't really care what your take is on, on the politics that, that have involved in all that. I focus on the legacy of music that's left behind. And, uh, uh I love the album. I think that's one of their better releases. Uh, so, you know, check it out if you like, uh, you know, if you like the, the old classic universal monsters and those types of things, um, these songs are directly related to, to all those themes. So, uh, again, just those are three of my uh, go-to albums around Halloween. I uh, hope you've enjoyed seeing those. If you've not heard them, again, check them out. If you like this video, hit uh, hit like, hit subscribe. Um, come back to the shop. i got some more videos coming, and uh, I thank you for stopping by. I hope you've been entertained. And as always, I'll catch you on the flip side.